Pikachu. Hey everyone, welcome to So Craftastic. Today is another back to school video and I'm going to show you how to make some Pokemon school supplies. And by the way, I have been saying Pokemon, Pokemon incorrectly since about the age of eight, you know, and I just recently learned that I was saying it wrong uh, from a Twitter post. So if that is one of your biggest pet peeves, please excuse me, but I'll probably mess up a few times in this video just letting you know. It's a hard habit to break. Putting that aside, today's video is a collab with the following awesome channels. Nova Thorne, Sozuya, Aburuchi, Pita Bread, Octobu, and Rar Doodles. I'm always happy to get to know more channels in the YouTube community, especially DIYers, so if you guys need some more channels to watch, please check out their videos and subscribe to them to see our back to school collab. Now, let's get into the Pokemon tutorial. For the first project, I'm using these mini perler beads that I purchased from Michael's Craft Store. As you can see, I got a few variety packs, so there's a ton of colors to choose from. Now I'm deciding what I want to make with them by searching patterns on Google Images. Of course, since this is a Pokemon themed video, and I did it again, Pokemon, I am choosing to recreate an Ash and Pikachu sprite. But you can pick any design you want to or even come up with your very own. The actual process is kind of tedious but very easy. Zoom in on the image if you're using one and follow it bead for bead exactly as you see it. Tweezers help a ton when working with these mini perler beads, by the way. Also, I like to start with the black outline, then fill in with the other colors, but if you want to do it row by row or column by column, that is totally okay too. Now I have completed little Pikachu, and it is time to fuse him together with an iron. Use either the paper that came with your beads or parchment paper, not wax paper, because that'll melt, and heat up your iron to a medium setting. I always tend to use the cotton option. Carefully and evenly, iron the beads in a circular motion, applying only a little bit of pressure. You'll notice the beads look a bit darker as they melt, which usually only takes about 30 seconds to a minute for a tiny piece like this. After ironing, let the beads cool before removing the paper. You'll notice it starts to peel away on its own as the beads change temperature. Remove this from the pegboard and flip it over onto a flat surface. Now repeat the same steps to iron the other side, but this time don't iron for as long and apply even less pressure than you did before. Again, let it cool completely because it's super hot and you could burn yourself, so be careful. Here's a comparison of a Dratini I made with regular sized perler beads, first one I made with the minis. So there's definitely a huge difference as you can see. I'm going to turn this mini one into a pencil topper by gluing a piece of felt to the back, aka the more ironed side, and I'm going to use some super glue. I have found that Gorilla Glue works really, really well with perler beads because I used it to attach a creation to my planner many, many years ago, and it's still there. Anyway, the final step is to take a piece of elastic and loop it tightly around the pencil that you want to use before securing that with glue and sticking on the perler bead figure. You can switch this from pencil to pencil, and if you need to erase, that's fine. All you have to do is just slide that down, and you can use the eraser with ease. I sounded like an infomercial there. Anyway, random pointless fact, I think it's really cool that Ash's last name is Ketchum. Did you guys know that? You probably did. You know, like Ketchum All, which is very clever, Pokemon creators. Very, very clever. Okay, so this next part of the video is just a quick idea before we get into the second DIY. If you happen to have a dry erase board for your locker, you can very, very easily transform it into a Pokemon theme. I've been using Trimarim for almost a year now. I actually put it on my fridge though to write down reminders and my shopping list, and I do like to switch it up every once in a while, the border, to make it a little bit different and fun. No, this video is absolutely not sponsored at all, but if you do want to purchase this reversible dry erase board slash mirror, you can do so on Amazon, and I'll put the link below. I just think it's cool. So anyway, moving on, I'm going to show you how to make a Pokemon Go themed notebook. For this, I again used Google Images to print some characters and a Pokeball. So I'm gonna use a sharp pair of scissors since there's a lot of detail in some of the images, 
But first, before we snip things up, I happen to trim the sheet of scrapbook paper to fit the notebook cover better. You can do these steps any order you want. And actually, if you're anything like me and you can't cut perfectly straight to save your life, you can use a paper cutter instead if you have one. Now I'm using clear packaging tape to laminate the front of every printed image. This will make them a bit more durable so they won't rip easily over time. By the way, if you are not yet subscribed to this channel, please click the red subscribe button either on the screen or below the video to help the Socrotastic family grow to 2 million. Once that's done, carefully cut them all out, and this took kind of a while, but I was very, very particular about this so I didn't accidentally cut off any of the black outlines. My idea was to make the notebook interactive, so I went ahead and used adhesive magnet cards for this. I stuck those all over the front of the notebook, minus about half an inch to an inch all around. I do this because I figure it's easier for glue to stick to the notebook cover rather than the magnets. So put glue only on the empty border of the notebook, then attach the piece of scrapbook paper on top like so. I finished trimming off the excess paper by opening the cover and cutting any parts that hung over the edges. So when I went to Myrtle Beach a few weeks ago, I caught some Pokemon along the boardwalk. That is why I chose a tropical scene for my background. I know Togepi probably wouldn't be standing in the middle of the ocean, but you get the idea. So attach the magnets to the back of as many images as you want, and there you have it! A magnetic Pokemon Go themed notebook that can be disguised as a regular beach scene whenever you're not using it to further your Pokemon Master status. By the way, I've always thought that Jinx was one of the absolute weirdest slash creepiest Pokemon ever, so I had to include her in this video, of course. DIY number three is one especially for you duct tape lovers. I have already made a pencil pouch completely out of duct tape on my channel a couple years back or whenever, so this time we're going to do something a little different, not to mention quicker and easier. The vinyl pencil pouch you see here is one I purchased from Target for 99 cents. I'm covering the back with one long strip of duct tape at a time and overlapping those pieces slightly so none of the pouch shows through. Also, I folded some excess tape over both sides so it won't peel off easily in the future. Once I had covered the back, I of course moved on to the front and did the exact same thing. Now, surprise surprise, Google Images is helping me out once again. Here I am freehanding Squirtle's eye. You could also print a template if you don't want to draw one, so go ahead and cut that out and lay down a strip of black tape, cutting it off from the roll, put the image on top, and secure it with a couple scraps of tape before cutting around the paper template with an X-Acto knife. Now the tape should be the same shape as the eyeball image. I went ahead and repeated the same steps to get a second eye cut from black tape, and once that's finished, go ahead and trim off the thick outline from the paper like I'm doing here, and go ahead and also cut away half the circle type shape on top to trace a highlight onto the tape. I also made two other white shapes for the red irises to be on top of. Clean up any excess white before attaching those to the black base, then finish with the white highlight pieces. If any of that didn't make sense, just watch it without the volume on because it's easier to just see it rather than have me explain. After sticking both eyes on the front of the pouch as centered as possible, grab a piece of parchment paper and stick a strip of black on top. Then flip it over so you can see the back of the tape show through and draw half a mouth on with a Sharpie marker, only half, and I only did this because it'll be mirrored after I fold the piece in half and cut around it like this because I know that I couldn't make it even on my own. Then, open that back up and carefully remove the parchment paper from the back of that like you would do with a sticker that you're peeling from a sticker sheet. Stick it in place to give Squirtle his smile, then add tiny pieces for his nose and eyebrows as well. This pouch would be perfect for storing your new Pokemon themed pencils of course, along with all your regular school or office supplies as well. I really hope that you all enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. If you have not yet seen my most recent videos, go ahead and check out my back to school playlist to see weird school supplies, a DIY lava lamp notebook, and whatever other stuff I did. Playlist will be linked below and in the information box up there. Also, I just uploaded a kids 
full face of makeup challenge video because a lot of people are doing that and I thought it would be fun. So if you want to see me put on makeup from a heart-shaped container with butterfly eyeshadow, then go check out that video as well. And of course, don't forget to check out all my friends' videos, which are linked below as well. Everything is down there. It's like a magical unicorn underneath the video. Ding! If you think I'm even a tiny bit interesting and you happen to want to follow my life on social media, all those are in the description box below, okay? So Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, go! I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and that I will see you back here in my next video. Bye! Pika pika!